What is the transient response of a CMOS inverter? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju. Welcome to the Backbench Engineering community. Where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What is the transient response of a CMOS inverter? Well, let's find out. So, the word transient, it means the momentary response of a CMOS inverter. That is, with each infinitesimally small period of time, what is the response of a CMOS inverter? So for that, first let us convert a CMOS inverter. Basically, an inverter is a device in which whatever input we give, we have to get the output. That is, if you're giving zero as the input, we have to get one as the output. Or if you're getting one as the input, we have to get zero as the output. So here, let us now construct a CMOS inverter. So we know for a fact that in the case of a CMOS circuit, it will have two components. First, it will have a pull-up network and then it will have a pull-down network. So first, here, this is connected to VDD and the pull-up network is made up of PMOS transistors like this. And here in the case of a CMOS inverter, it will have one PMOS transistor like this. Now here, this PMOS transistor is now connected to an NMOS transistor which forms the pull-down network. And this now is connected to the ground. So now here, at the gate terminal here, we give the input Vn. And now over here, we get the output V out. And this now can be connected to a load capacitance, say Cl. And here we can obtain the output at this particular capacitor. Here, this is the source and this is the drain. But here, this is the drain and this is the source. And this is the gate terminal for both of these transistors. So here, this is the circuit, the circuit of a CMOS inverter. This forms the pull-up network and this forms the pull-down network. So here, let us now give a small analysis of this. So here, if I take this transistor as Q1 and this transistor as Q2, here, if I give 0 as the input here, the input is 0. So that means that here it is also 0 and here it is 0. But in the case of a PMOS transistor, when the gate, when the input given at the gate is 0, this becomes on. So here, this Q1 is on. But now here, in the NMOS side, when we give 0 as the input, this particular transistor becomes off. So therefore, the circuit gets disconnected over here, that is open circuited over here, and therefore whatever comes here, we get it at the output, and therefore we get an output as 1. Now subsequently, if we give 1 as the input over here, when we give 1 as the input, what we observe is that, in this case, in the case of a PMOS transistor, when 1 is the input, this becomes off. But here, when 1 is input, this becomes on. But here, since this is off, the circuit gets broken over here, and therefore, we don't get anything over here outside. So therefore, the output is 0. Here, this is off, and this is on. So this is the working of a CMOS inverter. So I have drawn it over here, the true table of a CMOS inverter. So now here, now that we know how a CMOS inverter works, let's now check out the transient response of a CMOS inverter. So here, for this, first let us take the input voltage Vn. That is whatever we give over here. So initially let me assume that the input is 0. So this is Vn. So initially the input is 0. And now let me assume that I'm giving a pulse like this. So ideally the pulse signal must be like this. this is an ideal pulse signal. But in a practical scenario, that is not how it happens. When we give a pulse, so here from 0, when we give a pulse to VDD, it increases like this. And here it now reaches VDD, which is this voltage, and now it goes like this. Again now when we have to go to 0, it now goes like this and then it becomes zero. So this is the input voltage. So this is whatever we give here. So now what we have to understand is the output voltage that we get over here corresponding to this particular input voltage. So here, 
now is when an interesting phenomena comes into play between the gate and the drain that is between the gate and the drain of a pmos as well as an nmos transistor there will exist a gate to drain capacitance like this there will exist a gate to drain capacitance like this in the case of a PMOS as well as NMOS transistor. So because of the presence of this capacitance property of a particular transistor, we will not get the ideal response. That is, if we take the output voltage over here, the ideal response would be in the case of zero, in the case of zero, the output must be one. That is, the output must be VDD like this and now when the input increases ideally the output must decrease like this and here subsequently we have to get it like this this is what we expect this is what we think we would get but this is not actually what we get that is because of the presence of this particular capacitive property over here so here what we observe is that as the input slowly increases from 0 to VDD. As the input increase from 0 to VDD, here, when this is 0, this particular transistor is on, but this particular transistor is off. And now, when it increases slowly, this output voltage has to decrease like this. But, but because of this particular capacitance over here, because of this capacitive property, what we observe is that Along with this particular input, the output also increases for a momentary point like this. And it is after this momentary point, it goes down like this. That is, there is a momentary increase in the output voltage. And this momentary increase in voltage happens till Vtn. That is the threshold voltage of this NMOS transistor. That is because, it is because of this particular capacitive property, this particular voltage, output voltage increases till here. But when it reaches the threshold voltage of this NMOS transistor, now the pull down network would pull it back down and back it would now go to zero. Similarly, over here as well, what we observe is that at this particular point, because of this particular capacitive property, as a momentary decrease like this, and then we would get the required output like this. This is a transient response of a CMOS inverter. So here, in the case of the input, if this is say 50% of this output set is VDD by 2. If this is 50% value of the input, this is the 50% value of the input, and if this is the 50% value of the output, then this particular delay value, this particular delay value is tau fall. And now here, if this is say the 50% value of the input, and if this is say 50% value of the output, then this delay is tau rise. So now here, in the ideal case, that is if, a, if we were giving a pulse input like this, if this was the input rather than this, then in the ideal case, this tau fall was approximately equal to 0 0.693 into R equivalent into C. But here, since we have given a practical input like this, this value of tau fall is equal to the equivalent resistance of N mos R equivalent N into CL, that is the load capacitance CL over here. This tau rise is equal to R equivalent of P into CL. That is, it is simply the delay between the input going to 50% and the output going to 50%. As simple as that, guys. As simple as that. This thus is the basic concept of the transient response of a CMOS inverter. As simple as that, guys. There's nothing more to it. So, I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what is referred to as the transient response of a CMOS inverter. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.